Fan Appreciation Month here on Reaction and Review. Tonight, guys, we're checking out a movie from 1972. That movie is Blackula. Now, I read the summary on the back of the Blu-ray case. I actually just watched the trailer about two minutes ago, and this looks like it might be a promising film. Uh, first of all, Blackula is given the name Blackula by Count Dracula. I'm not kidding. That was actually in the trailer, and it was one of the goofiest things in the entire trailer, is just Dracula dubbing his new black vampire Blackula. Apparently, sometime after that, Blackula goes to Los Angeles and starts feasting on women. So, that sounds like it might be interesting. I don't know, guys, what... I, I don't really know what, what is going to happen when you take a vampire film and a black exploitation flick and you smash them together. But God damn it, I'm going to find out. I'm certainly hoping for it, for it to be a fun movie. I'm certainly hoping for it to be decent. But I have no earthly clue. The trailer looked kind of promising, but that really doesn't mean a whole lot. So I'm going into this thing not really knowing if this is going to be any, any good at all. And that normally makes for a good episode of this show. So, once more, I am hoping for it for it to be a fun movie, but the only way I'm going to find out is if I shut up and I push play, and I'm going to do that right now. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out Blackula. Wait a moment. So this, so this fucking dude had two puncture wounds in his neck that were two or three inches deep. And it's been ruled as a rat bite. Wow. That just boggles the mind, guys. I mean, you know, I've never seen a rat who could do a two-inch deep bite, you know, wound ever. But then again, I've also never been to L.A. Perhaps maybe they have really giant fucking rats. I don't know. Still, though, that's a very odd way to rule a vampire bite, especially when the bite is that deep. You know what I mean? Okay, I'm going to comment on something. It's incredibly trivial, but it's bugging the fuck out of me. So, we are at the morgue. There's a sign on the wall that says that the cooler that stores the bodies is to maintain a temperature of 30 degrees Fahrenheit, which is below freezing. There is no morgue on Earth that stores bodies at 30 degrees Fahrenheit because... When it's below freezing, it begins to damage the bodies. Especially a police morgue where they might want to where they might want to go over the body and look for any kind of like suspicious wounds and shit. Very hard to see that if the body is breaking down because the cooler is below freezing. I know, guys, it's trivial, it's stupid. I'm probably the only person who looked at that sign and even thought about that. But I noticed it, and it bugged the fuck out of me. You know, guys, I am going to say this. I am, I am surprised at how good the writing in this is. I'm so used to black exploitation films being overly cheesy and kind of corny. This is actually really well written. I really haven't had a whole lot to say because I've been focused on the movie. I don't have much I can pick at. There's not really much I can really say. Just, I'm really digging this. I'm digging it a hell of a lot more than I thought I freaking would. And that's awesome, dude. Hell yeah. Okay, I have a question. So, Blackula, Mama Waldy, whatever the hell they want to call him. He was smart enough to kill the woman who took his, who, well, tried to take his photo in order to hide the fact that vampires can't be friggin' photographed, but he didn't destroy the negative. I understand that he has sat in that coffin for hundreds of years, but if he knew enough to destroy the photo, you'd think he would have been smart enough to destroy the negative. But no, that's how they find out that he's a vampire. Is, he didn't bother to, to destroy the negative. Fancy that shit. I'm sorry, guys. That just felt a little bit odd to me. All right, it just I mean, because everything else here is just so is just so strongly you know written. That seems so dumb. 
You know what I mean? Well, guys, that was Blackula. Let's shut that off. Okay. Well, um, that was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. At least there's that. Um, also, on a side note, this has nothing to do with the movie, but during the final act, a small thunderstorm rolled through, and it really helped enhance the mood. It was really cool. I kind of wish that the thunderstorm was still here, then we could get some, like, thunder in the fucking background. But anyway, that is neither here nor there. Let's talk about the movie itself. Uh, again, I was pleasantly surprised. I was expecting this movie to be a cheesy, corny, you know, like, kind of stupid movie. And it does have moments that are exceptionally cheesy. But those are so few and far be... Those are so few and far between that it doesn't actually harm the film. And in fact, what is here in terms of writing is incredibly strong. We have a very well-told vampire story. I absolutely loved the way that this thing was told. Uh, I loved almost every character, minus one. There was one character. He has two scenes, and I, I honestly wanted a scene where Blackula just straight up killed him. And we never get that, and that's Skillet. Skillet is the one character I didn't like, because the character is just irritating. And again, He's in for all of two scenes. Maybe, at best, he's in the movie for like three minutes. And I hated the character so much that I wanted to see a death scene, and I sadly never got one. So, um, there, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what, what kind of negatives I could possibly pull from the script. Really, uh, just, just like minor things. Like, I talked about how... I, I talked about how Blackula, or uh, what the hell was his name again, Mama Waldi, was able to, he, he was able to figure out that a camera is not going to capture his photo, even though he was turned into a vampire 200 years ago, was locked in a coffin, and didn't come out until, like, a few days ago. But yet he knows what a camera is, he knows how a camera works, he knows the whole thing about vampires and photographs and reflections, yada yada yada. So he knows that he's not captured on the photos, and he's willing to kill the he's willing to kill the wom the woman who took the photos and destroy the photos of him but not destroy the negatives so there's evidence that he's a vampire. It seemed a little bit stupid, and it's the big twist where everyone figures out, yes, mom, yes, Mama fucking Waldy's the vampire. The guy with the 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 guy with the booming voice and the goofy fucking cape is the vampire. Who'd have thunk it? Anyway, <laughs> beyond little things like that and irritating characters, like actually irritating character or skillet, everything else here, I really don't have a problem with in terms of writing. The ending, I, I will say that the ending is almost touching and kind of tragic, and it actually makes you feel, it, may, it makes you feel a bit of sympathy for, for Blackula. It makes you feel a bit of sympathy for him just simply because of how the ending is written. And then the ending is borderline ruined by a really shitty, shitty special effect, but I'll get to special effects in a moment. Um... But hey, you know what? Writing here is incredibly strong. It is one of the better vampire films I've seen. I've seen a whole lot of vampire flicks, guys. This one here is certainly is certainly far better than many of them I have I have watched. Um, part of that is part of that is because of how the characters are written and, and and how everything is fleshed out and exactly how the story goes our pacing here our pacing here is awesome our characters are fleshed out enough where you're going to care about most of them except again for skillet but oh well fuck him anyway uh moving swiftly onward writing here is just great i mean well i can't say great it's good it is decent for it's decent for vampire fiction, but of course, vampire fiction is some of the easiest shit you can fucking write. So this thing here is not going to be seen as high high art simply because it's vampires. The only thing that's lazier to write than vampires is fucking zombies. 
But oh well, it's still decent and it's still a fun movie the way that it's written. Now, also on top, on top of the strong writing, we have amazing acting from almost the entire cast. There's maybe two or three actors who kind of sucked. I know uh, who the hell, what the hell was the name of the coroner? S Swenson? No, wait. Swenson, I think, was the um, guy at the fucking funeral home. Who the hell was the... Well, anyway, the well, actually, both of them. It was both the fucking guy who runs the funeral home and the guy who runs the morgue. Both those actors sucked. Okay, <laughs> just straight up. Uh, the Both of them were terrible. But beyond those two, and again, the guy playing, playing Skillet at least knew how to play exceptionally irritating. I honestly don't know if I dislike him so much because of how the actor played him or how he was written. It was probably a combination of both. So I'm going to throw him into I'm going to throw him into the shit pit along with the coroner and the funeral fucking director. But every other cast member did a great job. And uh, well, a great job by uh, somewhat somewhat cheesy, somewhat low budget 1970s fare. It, which is which is usually kind of setting the standards very very low, but for those standards, the acting here is amazing, and it's probably some of the best you will see from a from a black exploitation flick. Um, I would like to put a special special notice onto the film's star. Let me see if I can pull his name off of uh, the back of the Blu-ray here. Um, no. I don't see his name. Well, they actually have his last name, Marshall, but they don't have his first name. Uh, he turned in a he turned in a fantastic job. He was awesome as Blackula or Mama Waldy. Again, they kind of sort of flip flop. Be no, actually, they they, they they almost exclusively call him Mama Waldy through throughout the film. But Dracula, upon giving him the curse, dubs him Blackula, and even in the closing credits, he was credited as Blackula. So. I'm just going to call him Blackula just for just for the sake of fucking convenience from this point on. He turned in the best showing in the entire film and he carries this thing. He carries it and does a fantastic job of it. Now, uh, where the writing and the acting were really strong, I got to talk about the makeup. Um one thing the vampire fangs, okay? Uh, cuz there's a ton of vampires featured in this film. Uh, one thing that always kind of bothers me with some vampire flicks is when there isn't consistency from vampire to vampire in terms of how the fangs look. Especially in film in films like this where all of them are coming from a central source, which was Blackula bites somebody, then they turn into a vampire, and then they bite somebody, and then that person turns, in, turns into a vampire. It's all the same strain of vampirism. So you'd think they would all have the same kinds of fangs. But no, you have certain ones where the fangs look where the fangs look really decent and they look really classy. And there's other ones where they just where they basically just look as if they took like drinking drinking fucking straws and cut them off at about here. So you have these gigantic like four inch four inch fangs dangling out of people's mouths. A lot of them look like shit. A lot of them look really cheap. The ones the ones who have the slightly more natural shorter fangs at least look better. And our title character is granted with those shorter, slightly more natural-looking fangs. And thank God for that, because if he had the gigantic, gigantic fangs, it would have looked horrible. Um, and Dracula, uh, during during the uh, prologue of the film, is also granted the smaller, natural-looking fangs. So apparently, it's just if you're one of the like nameless, shitty vampires, you get you basically get the big, goofy fangs. And it just looks terrible, and it kind of sort of pulls you out of the film a bit. Um, but see, that honestly is a minor thing. I, I want to talk about Blackula's vampire makeup, you see, because because as we see the character, we do have like two separate characters almost. Mama Waldi, as is, is basically how he looks when he's going to the club, or when he's, you know, going after, when, or when he's going after the woman he's pining for, and all of this, where he doesn't have the fangs, he looks moderately normal, and then when he has to feast, he goes into vampire mode, and it's not just the fangs, they also give him 
this these weird fucking like they they basically they basically are almost fucking like uh, mutton chops, which which are not even actually connected to the sideburns and they're not connected to the mustache. He just has these gigantic patches of hair right here, and then his eyebrows get like ultra ultra thick and they go all the way across and they connect to his hair and then they add even more like makeup on him and it looks really really homely like they honestly could have simply just given him the fangs and it would probably have looked have looked better but by throwing on all of that extra bullshit it looked really corny and it kind of sort of ruined the whole cool look that the character had so I do have to say that that right there is a problem, and that rain is getting really loud. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that. It's bouncing off the fucking roof. Ah, and right there is a touch of thunder. I really hope the mic picked up. There we go. Anyway, yes, the mood is bad. Anyway, the makeup on him looked kind of weird, and the makeup on all of the other vampires was this weird mixed bag, because certain ones, their skin has, like, turned turned blue. Other ones, the skin's kind of yellowish. Um, again, we have the issue with fang. We have the issue with, like, fang fucking size and fang placement, because certain ones will have the fangs, like, right about here, where they would naturally be. Other ones have the fangs way off here onto the side as if one of their like back teeth is turned into the fangs so we have all that kind of shit but again all that's minor all of this background vampires you're never going to care about but it is worth mentioning it is worth mentioning at least to to a point and the horrendous makeup job on our title character is also worth mentioning so we have makeup that was kind of sort of a mixed thing it was kind of goofy but it still sort of it still sort of worked it's just it kind of ruined the cool image of our of our titular blackula so we have that um music uh our score here is really cool i want to talk about the soundtrack because a whole lot of scenes take place at this club where every where everybody goes where our where our where our where our main doctor goes where blackula goes where everybody goes to this fucking club and there's this band who plays there and you get to hear some of their music and it sounds amazing it's really catchy it's really cool it's fantastic stuff and a whole lot and a lot of the other like background music is really really decent like nothing here actually is wasted it's just really really interesting music it's fascinating some of it actually is kind of catchy and sort of funky i really liked it it was cool and i certainly had some fun with it oh going back to special effects for a second um transforming there's a couple of bits uh the ending i'm really not going to spoil the ending but they kind of sort of shift from one thing to another and they do it with without actually doing like morphs or anything that looks kind of realistic it's just fades and it fades from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, and it looks horrible. That's, and of course, that, that, that also is how Blackula turns into a bat. The one time he turns into a bat is he just takes his cape, and he holds it straight up, and then they fade into what looks to be almost like a hand-drawn animated bat that, like, flies around a little bit, and it looks really stupid. That sort of falls underneath special effects. I wanted to mention those. Those were incredibly crap, but oh well, those also are minor, almost nothing shots that are not going to take, that are not going to really take, take away from the quality of the film itself. So, um, I covered music. Our uh, camera work here is really good. Our sound mix is fine. There actually are a couple of moments where stuff is friggin' dubbed in and it's timed and it's and it's like timed wrong but again that's maybe like two fucking lines of dialogue are not are not fucking timed right when they were when they were dubbed in beyond that though our sound mix is amazing um our lighting here is awesome uh just guys this thing here is a movie that is a lot better than it really has any right to be and i say that because this thing here is one of those low budget black exploitation flicks. Those are not known for quality. At least the few of them I've seen are sometimes at least kind of watchable, but they aren't known for fucking quality. This thing is quality. Can I recommend Blackula? 
Yes, I absolutely can. If you are a fan of vampire films and you haven't seen this thing, you really should. It is it is one of the finer vampire films out there. It certainly is nowhere near the best, but I would definitely recommend it, and I will highly recommend it. And later on this month, I get to watch the sequel. I'm having hopes on the sequel. Now, because it's Fan Appreciation Month, Blackula came off the Amazon wish list. The person who sent it in was Kevin, and I'd love to give Kevin a proper shout-out, but I never got a link, I never got a message from him, nothing. So, unfortunately, Kevin, I'm not going to be able to promote like a website or a Twitter, or maybe like a Twitter page, a Tumblr, or any of that. I really wish I could, because uh, this thing here was awesome, and I'd really, really like to thank you in some way more than just saying, dude, dude, you're fucking awesome, thank you, but unfortunately, uh, all, all I have to work off of is a name, but still, dude, I would like to thank you for sending in this thing, I was really curious about it, I did not expect it to be this freaking good, and I wouldn't have known that if you hadn't sent it in, dude, and for that, I thank you, you are awesome. Kevin, you are so cool, and later on this month, I get to watch the, I get to watch the sequel, and again, that is thanks to you. Now, I'm kind of in the mood for another vampire film, The Lost Boys. I'm going to go watch The Lost Boys, because that one is probably by far my favorite vampire film ever. I'm going to go and watch that, because that thing is fucking epic and awesome, and I can't wait for later this month when I get to watch Blackula, well, well, the Blackula sequel, Scream, Blackula, Scream. God, I cannot wait for that. Anyway, guys, with that, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Ace.